So I'm Ali uh, from Rico. Um, for those who don't know, uh, we work in the realm of contemporary urban art, uh, work in commercial commissions, uh, we create exhibitions and mural projects, and we run education programs in Scotland, uh, the UK, and abroad. And um, what I want to talk about uh, tonight is, uh, I guess, like a, a conversation I've been having kind of with myself uh, about public art murals and um, the role of graffiti art uh, and its influence on public art. So this was an uh, article I found in a magazine from 1972, which is, I guess you could say, pre-graffiti. Um, and these are some uh, examples of uh, murals in Glasgow, again, pre-graffiti and its influence. And I think you'll probably see as we go on uh, quite a change of style. Um, and I guess the reason that I think about this stuff, uh, not only because I paint massive stuff all the time in uh, public spaces, is that I used to be a really kind of traditional um, graffiti artist. Uh, there's me painting on stuff that I shouldn't have been uh, for a long time, and I was really into it, and I did a lot, and um, probably annoyed a lot of people, and hopefully there's no police in the room. Uh, so, yeah, uh, my own history, I guess, uh, you, you would say that I don't know, like, how does a middle-class kid from Scotland become involved in that kind of thing? And really, it's uh, this book, Subway Art, which came over from New York, uh, early 80s, and that was a kind of documentation of what was happening across there. Uh, and that came to Europe and to Scotland, and these are some examples of, like, really early um, graffiti scene pieces in Scotland, uh, which was quite a small but pretty prolific scene um, and has continued to be. Um, but what I've always found quite weird about it is that, um, like, despite the fact that it's like the other side of the world almost, um, that scene followed the same kind of rules and outlines and, and ideas that were from the ghetto in New York in the 70s and continues to. Uh, and so, we kind of had this situation where the council was quite supportive of that and there was legal walls and through the mid-90s and into the late 90s there was lots of graffiti. But then it started to spill out into places where it shouldn't have been and the council didn't like it and decided to kind of clamp down and uh, bring up this zero tolerance policy on graffiti. And here's some of my work being uh, taken away by the council. Good job there, mate. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so um, meanwhile, that's all going on. We're sort of like moving towards the uh, end of the 90s, early 2000s, and, and there's this kind of development of street art and also development of graffiti, and techniques are getting uh, better and paint's getting better and people getting better and you're starting to see photorealism and characters and um, I guess at the same time, you know, this stuff's kind of impressive in its context but also it's becoming more mainstream and it's becoming more acceptable. So you've got kind of, uh, I guess Kelburn's quite a good example of that, you know, like these guys are hardcore graffiti artists, but they painted this castle and everyone loves it. Um, and kind of alongside all of this, uh, I hope you're following this, uh, there was a council worker from Glasgow who traveled to New York and saw these uh, murals and thought that that would be a good way to kind of regenerate and revigorate and, and cover up uh, the, the graffiti that was happening in, in Glasgow and had been happening previously. And, you know, it's, um, that kind of sparks a new phase of mural commission in the city and that follows a kind of global trend. And it's, you know, graffiti artists, their skills had got to this point where it kind of lent themselves to these commissions and... Um, you start seeing things like this, but but what what we get is you know I think they told us I don't know what I like, uh, but I know when I see it. And if you're commissioning public art, that's pretty scary for me, um, and on this scale as well, you know. Um, so that you know that leads to uh, you know we've got a uh, mural fund now and the mural trail and you know, this recent documentary about Conley, and, you know, this stuff is all good uh, in, in a lot of senses, but um, I've always kind of wondered, and this is what this whole conversation I'm having with myself is about, is, like, 
does, does this work, you know, get the same scrutiny as uh, other forms of public art? And basically, you can't apply the same rules that graffiti has to public art because just saying, I mean, you know, it's big, so it's good, for me, isn't good enough. And to tie that back to the article, um, I've got a quote there, uh, which is, these works, however, are not just the outcome of a concern with scale, but of several considerations that are probably common to all public art, past and present. And to tie that back to our practice and, and what we've been trying to do as a business is when we go into a space, like, we try to engage the community and the people that live there and that are going to use the work and see the work, and through, I guess, education and involvement, um, give them a sense of ownership of the artwork and of the space, and yeah, make make it theirs, you know. Um, and I feel that my background is oh my God, that's crazy. I'm putting that on like live. Uh, my background as a graffiti artist, uh, I think, gives me that kind of insight into the headspace that you know, bigger and more is not necessarily better, and there should be more narrative, there should be more variation and there should be more engagement. Uh, and to finish, this is a shameless plug. If you want to talk to me about this stuff, uh, July 14th Lighthouse is our 10th anniversary. Uh, so come down and see why this will ruin everything.